Last time on Land and Sea, we met the breed of dog known for its gentle, lumbering charm, the Newfoundland dog, the dog that Jackie Petrie can't imagine life without. When you look into the eyes, it's you know, like you fall in and drown. Jackie's was the story of a remarkable bond, a connection to the Newfoundland dog that goes back 30 years. Tonight, in a story that takes us across the border to the United States, we'll see just how strong the bond can be between a dog and its human, and the depth of a Newfoundland dog's devotion. In Grand Rapids, Michigan, we found the story of a Newfoundland dog unlike any we've heard before. His name is Clayton, his owner's name is Kathy, and together there's nothing they won't face. What a good boy. Good morning to the world, huh? Right? Good boy. What a good boy you are. Seven years ago, Kathy Catlett developed a rare neuromuscular condition. Bit by bit, she lost full use of her legs, arms, and shoulders. But Clayton has given Kathy back some of what she's lost. Ready? Brace. He's been her legs, arms, and shoulders ever since he was big enough to hold her weight. Clayton's watched Kathy go through every painful stage of her disability. He was with her even before she was in a wheelchair. I kind of knew that we would have a strong relationship, but not the way that it is. I mean, I never would have expected um, not only the doors physically that he opens um, to help me, but also emotionally. Really has helped me through a lot. I mean, he was there through all the testing, all the needles that were put into my, into my muscles and all the spinal taps and everything else. He's been there and has been my solid rock. Definitely my rock. My rock of Gibraltar. Or, no, let me change that to my rock of Newfoundland. <laughs> For more than six years now, they've been together. Clayton is Kathy's assistance dog. She calls him her canine guardian angel. Whoa. Hello, how are you? Is this yours? Is, are you sure? Yes, of course that's yours, isn't it? The huge yes. black dog and the tiny dark-haired woman. They complement each other perfectly. Yeah, everybody needs a good massage and a hug. Clayton outweighs Kathy by about 50 pounds. He's been heavier than her ever since he was six months old. Kathy wasn't in her chair then, but she knew one was in her future. So when she went looking for an assistance dog, she went looking for something big. Something powerful enough to pull her chair if need be, yet gentle enough to be trusted with her increasingly fragile body. It came down to one of four male Newfoundland dog pups. I was sitting at the breeder's dining room table and he was asleep at my feet. And I thought, interesting. I could, I could definitely deal with this because I knew eventually that's where he would be. And all of a sudden I dropped my pen and I thought, crud, how am I going to get this? And so I'm trying to coordinate muscles. And I look down and he had already picked the pen up and he's sitting there holding it in his mouth. And I looked at the breeder and I said, this is my puppy and this is going to be my assistance dog. Historically, Clayton is true to his breed. Aside from its gentle nature, the Newfoundland dog is known for an instinctive ability to rescue, a willingness to lay down its life for its owner. There are countless stories of water rescues, some fact and some fable, no doubt. But inherited or not, it's clear Clayton possesses the instinct to assist and protect, at least when it comes to Kathy. There are only two Newfoundland dogs working as certified assistance dogs in the United States. Clayton is one of them. 
Kathy is proud of this because of the kind of animal he is and because she trained him herself. And amazingly, at six months, she trusted him completely. His patience is a virtue, it really is. You know, there are times when he'll pick something up for me and I might be having a hard time with my arms and trying to coordinate grabbing something and I might drop it 10, 20 times, yet he'll continue to pick it up and put it back in my lap, whereas some humans um, would get frustrated. Is that your tickle spot? Is that your tickle spot? In many ways, Kathy and Clayton take care of each other. Every morning, faithfully, she grooms him, what he needs for his long, thick coat and what she needs for her shoulders. She says combing Clayton is the only physiotherapy that's really worked for her. Look how handsome you are. What a handsome guy you are, huh? And while Kathy takes care of Clayton's coat out here, the other handsome guy in her life looks after what's left behind on the carpet. Roy Horman met Kathy and Clayton about four years ago. Call it coincidence or fate at a Newfoundland dog show. When Roy and I came together, Roy knew that we're a joint package <laughs> and there was no breaking us up. So, um, and Roy was very accepting of that. He never did have a problem with that. Had no problem with me being in a chair and, and or Clayton. Roy had his own Newfoundland dog for years, so he knows what it is to bond with a dog. But still, he says he's never seen anything like Kathy and Clayton. It's almost like they're one. I had a lawyer try to tell me that Clayton was just a pet, and I'm like, no, he's not. Um, he's her ham and hands and legs, and uh, they they help each other out. He he fills in where she where her body is shut down at. So it's very unique. And unless you're really around him for a period of time, you really don't see how much he really does for her and how well bounded they really are. It's really cool. Take it. Before Roy came along, Clayton opened all the doors for Kathy. She relied on him completely, the one constant in the ever-changing world of her disability. Good boy. Yes, good boy. You're so helpful. Like I said, I think I'll keep you. The big black dog was always there, watching and waiting to learn. As my disability progressed, he um, was willing and waiting, and eager, waiting for me to teach him how, what else I needed him to help me with. Okay. The bond between Clayton and Kathy goes way beyond the practical things she's trained him to do and the depth of his intuition has surprised even her. Hold on. Kathy suffers from seizures. Oh, if her blood sugar level drops too quickly, she's in trouble. Okay, all righty then. Kathy has a machine that she uses to monitor her blood sugar level, yeah, but she also has Clayton. This one's yours. Somehow, Clayton can sense when Kathy's about to have a seizure. He just seems to know instinctively. It starts with a certain look he gives her, a look which turns into a purposeful whine if she ignores him. Clayton started doing this before he was four months old, and in the beginning, even Kathy didn't realize what was going on. I had had him for a few weeks, and I would put him in his kennel at night, and I was in the bedroom, and I would hear this rattle, 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 rattle of the cage knock it off and go to sleep. It's time for bed. Rattle, 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 and it wouldn't stop. I had a seizure afterwards. I remember hearing the two sets of rattle, and then that was it. And we were actually there when Clayton gave Kathy the look she now recognizes so well. Her monitor confirmed her sugar levels were dropping. Okay. Clayton, help. Go get a Coke. Forward. Get a Coke. Hurry. Help. Take it. After the alert, this is Clayton's next job. If Kathy can get a hit of sugar in her system quickly, she can usually ward off the seizure. Pull hard. Pull hard. Good boy. All right. Good. Get a Coke. Take it. 
Good boy. Get a coat. Good boy, bring. That's my man. Good helper. Yes, you are. Good. Give. Thank you. Good boy. Thank you. Good boy. Another lifesaver you are. Sometimes having a, an alert response dog is worse than a nagging mother because if I stop drinking instead of drinking the Coke down as quick as I do, um, I get this look like, I brought it to you, you have to drink it or otherwise you're going to have problems. Okay, I, I'm trying to get it open. Closer. Come here. So you are my canine guardian angel, aren't you? You definitely are. Clayton's been there the times Kathy has had seizures too, to literally catch her when she falls. He will automatically stand and will come in front of my legs and will stand and stay there and wait until, because a lot of times my body will throw me forward and what he'll do is he'll stand there and wait for me to come forward and then what he'll do is he'll lay down but make sure that my upper body is over him and somehow I don't know how but I always have one of my hands mostly it's my right hand under his collar to hold on every day I, I literally thank my lucky stars because I wouldn't be here without him has he ever been wrong no and let me tell you I, uh, it's interesting that you bring that up. My monitor at times has failed me. I always, I occasionally get error messages and I called the company and was talking to them and I said, you know, I know this is a piece of machinery and I know machineries make mistakes and, and I said, but you know what? I trust my dog more than I trust your monitor. A dog can't be trained to seizure alert. It's something Clayton does instinctively. But one thing Kathy did train him to do is call 911. She taught him to hit the speed dial numbers with his paw. He's done it three times in his life, always when Kathy was in the throes of a seizure. I would wake up and there would be a bedroom full of paramedics. And I'm like, and how did you get here? And they're like, your dog? I'm like, my dog? What do you mean? And they said, well, we got a 911 call and we heard a dog barking and you had called, you know, several months ago and told us that if there was ever a dog barking when we got a call from your house that it was because you needed medical assistance. So no one else was in the room to give him the command to call 911? Nope. nope. It was totally his judgment call? Mm -hmm. Did that blow you away, the fact that he had made this judgment call on his own to call 911? You know, it's, I don't know how else to say it except he and I were meant to be. And I mean, the bond that we have is so strong that I, I just can't, I, I can't put words to it. I mean, you, you just can sit back, I can sit back and look at him and go, I'm really in your hands, so. Clayton is always watching, always waiting. All work and no play makes, makes an unhappy move in the world. Yeah. In his protection of Kathy, his sensitivity and loyalty seems limitless. As an assistance dog, Clayton's cart is one of the tools of his trade. It can serve as a number of things, a laundry basket maybe, or in this case, a grocery cart. That's a good boy. Yay, finally air conditioning. Yay. Right? Whoa, right there. Whoa. Oh, got it in comedy. Come. Good, great. Thank you. Good. And left. Left. Left, 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 easy, easy, good boy. Clayton, take it, get it. That's it, good, good, take it, hold. Bring, bring it up. Good boy. You're a good man, aren't you? 
Does he like grocery shopping? About as much as I do. We don't do full grocery shopping. We send Roy out for groceries. The full grocery shopping, because it gets too heavy for the two of us to handle. So we just do the little things and send Roy for the heavy stuff. <laughs> and right, good boy. Hmm. What did Roy say we need? What a guy. Take him. Good boy. Got him? Good. Hold. Bring. Bring up. Okay. Now we have our frosted animal crackers. We're in good shape now. He's a Newfoundland. He loves to pick up things and loves to carry them. Um, and also loves to pull his cart. He loves to show off. <laughs> and he gets to show off even more in a grocery store. Do you ever worry he's going to let you down? No. He has never let me down, and I know he won't, because the bond between he and I are so strong that, I mean, we are literally cemented at the hip. <laughs> Above all else, Kathy Catlett is a realist. Over the progression of her disability, she's never fooled herself about her own future. And now, she doesn't fool herself about Clayton's. Clayton is six and a half years old, well past middle age for a giant breed of dog, and he's starting to slow down. That's a good boy. Easy. Already he has arthritis in his knees. Kathy is treating him for that and for problems he's developed in his spine. But still, there are some physical things that Clayton simply can't do anymore. The huge black dog has spent his entire life watching over Kathy. Since he was a puppy, he's been her canine guardian angel. But now, as Clayton's powerful body begins to break down, it's the tiny woman in the wheelchair who will watch over him. The way that I look at it is, as long as I can keep him as pain-free and comfortable, um, then I'm going to do everything I can and at whatever cost it is. I don't care. Um, he means too much to me. And then when it does come that time, um, I hate to really, to be honest with you, I really hate to, to think about it, but I do have it planned that he will be euthanized and he will be cremated and he will be kept with me. And then when I die, I will be cremated and all of my boys that were assistance dogs will all be put together and will be put out in God's creation, where we started. This winter, Kathy will get another Newfoundland pup. He'll be her assistance dog in training. Along with Roy's help, the puppy will allow Clayton to retire. He'll still watch over Kathy, and he'll still forewarn her of seizures, but he can send the puppy for the coke. My assistance dog will have an assistance dog and a human, and an assistance human. So, but we'll, you know, as I said, we'll deal with that as, you know, as things change and, and or we get older and it gets harder, we'll, we've dealt with so much change together. When I was going through all the testing and I really don't think I would have been able to go through because it was very, very painful. Um, he gave me the companionship and the courage to continue. There will always be a Newfoundland dog in Kathy's life. Of that, there is no doubt. But there will never be another Clayton. <laughs> <laughs>